Hello, it's lovely to um, see you all. I think most of you know me. If you don't, um, I'm Gwen Smith from the City Council. And I manage the, the housing team. So we cover property licensing, disrepair, and noise and ESB. So obviously tonight we're talking about damp and mould. I'm kind of have some specialists at the end. Obviously, I won't go into the real detail of what it is, because I think that's very much what people will be hearing about the experts. I'll be giving a good summary. You know, really, what we said you all want to know is, when are we going to take action against you and when are we going to protect against the tenants to actually who's responsible and who is doing what. So I'll try and cover that. And then obviously I'll hand it over to Emma. <coughs> so there's three different types of dam. I'm sure you all know this, but in case you don't, there's rising dam, there's penetrating dam, and then there's condensation. Obviously, at the moment, the real issue in the press and that you all care about is condensation. But I will just go through three different types just so you are aware of what you're potentially looking at. So, rising dam. This normally occurs when there's no DPC damp proof course or it's a defective damp proof course. And it only ever goes to one metre high because at that point, gravity kicks in and it never it equals out. So, if you have damp along the bottom of your wall on the ground floor, and it only goes to like half a metre, a metre, that's rising damp. You can't get rising damp on the first floor. That might sound obvious, but we had one specialist contractor tell us it was rising damp on a first floor flat. <laughs> no, it wasn't. Um, so obviously it's quite easy to get fixed, get somebody out to fix or install a big PC. It's quite easy. Um, so there's obviously an obvious tide mark, where as you can see it's where it's rising, where it's coming from, and naturally the moisture will spread across the wall a little bit as well. So obviously in the first instance, we would come out, we would find the issue, we'd say, hello landlord, hello managing agent, are you aware? Please get it fixed. Obviously in the first instance, most landlords, like yourselves, would just get it done, nice and easy. And so that would be informal action in the first, oh, I've turned it off. Press the button. Press the pop button. <laughs> I'm back on. Um, I thought it was a point out, but it's not. Button, button advances. Lovely, thank you. Um, obviously, if that if a landlord doesn't comply, at that point we can serve a legal notice, actually then making the landlord do the works to improve the property. If they don't, we can then come and do the works in default ourselves. So basically, we give you a reasonable time frame to get the works done. If at the end of that you haven't done the works, we'll get our own contractors and we will come and do the works and give you a nice bill for the privilege. Um, and then prosecute as well, unless you have some really good mitigation for why it hasn't been done. Um, so it's quite serious if you don't comply, because naturally it's quite a big defect. That moisture there is potentially going to lead to condensation and black spot mould later on, because there's moisture. All that water that's coming out of the wall is going to, through the really being on, it's going to go into the room. Um, so, and so on, we're going to keep rising and keep going into the room. So it does need fixing. Um, so yes, so that is what we can do around rising down. There's just another, another example. So again, you can see the, the low tide mark all along the bottom of the wall. Next is penetrating down. Well, this is probably more common in the properties you have, especially in the age of some of the stock in Newcastle. So this is normally a result of a defect in the property. It could be defective guttering, defective roof, maybe the pointing is gone in the walls and the water is coming in on the, through the sides. Or actually maybe if, the, if the, way, the way that the property is set up always gets the wind and the rain lashing against it, actually maybe the brickwork is just porous and absorbing the water. So it could be defect or it could actually just be poor construction, old or cheap bricks, just constantly getting battered in a wet winter and just becoming soaked with the water. So again, obviously you would say, landlord, please fix it. <clears throat> and again, if the landlord didn't, we would obviously do it ourselves. Um, and again, that would be the fence and obviously we would take action. Both of these issues, if they're not remedies, could be a breach of a license condition. All properties have wear and tear. So yes, naturally, in the first instance, it might not be. If you're doing regular inspections, you're finding these issues, finding these defects through your regular compliance inspections, of course it's not a breach, that's why you're doing the inspections. 
But if actually it's been two years since you last went out and the tenant's complained six times and you're ignoring the issue, then yeah, potentially it is a breach of the licence. So again, if you have a licence for properties, we could take action under the normal route, the traditional route of serving notice and doing works, but it could also be a breach of the licence that could be reviewed, that could be revoked. So again, there's, there's quite significant consequences of just general disrepair in your properties. So again, please do make sure you get the work done. But also, look at, the, look at the wider issues. If it's fixed quickly, you don't have damage to the plaster work, it doesn't need hacking off and replastering, re skimming, there's no wider expense. It's actually cheaper, it's better business sense to fix it straight away. And um, then actually, it's just a quick pa wet patch, it'll dry out, might need a lick of paint, and that's it. Those ones only quite significant works to make it good again. And again, we would, we would require that as part of the work that you would need to do to repair the leak and then make good the internal furnishings, well, internal um, walls and ceilings. <coughs> <coughs> the next one, condensation, what we all care about at the moment. And what's in the news and the government is telling us to be aware of. This obviously is a really bad case. But you can see where the tenants try to wash it off. They have actually made an effort. Um, that was taken just, just recently. That's a, 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 well, these are all recent photographs. Condensation, as Bruce has already mentioned, it is often caused by tenants, how tenants occupying the property. It was previously called lifestyle choice. I think we all know in the, in the current cost of living crisis, it's not a choice. Heating the property, feeding your kids, buying the toothpaste, actually the heating, go out the window and you put an extra jumper on. Um, so it isn't always now a tenant choice, it's a tenant life um, in some properties, in some cases, in some areas of the city. So yes, we do advise tenants, please put your heating on. Tenants, open your windows, not wide open, but get some ventilation into the property. Um, don't dry clothes on the radiators because drying on the radiator, the moisture goes straight off the clothes onto the cold walls, the moisture hangs there, and then you create black mold. And but obviously, these aren't always easy things. Just the other day in the office, we were saying 50 years ago, 100 years ago, you didn't have black mold because actually, you had single glazing, which was drafty, you had open chimneys, which are drafty. So, the draft, the ventilation, actually helped to well, didn't allow condensation or black spot mold to really occur. So it's that balance of, get, I mean, if you're going to replace your windows, put trigger vents in, so actually tenants can allow some ventilation into the property. Maybe install some, actually I think I'm jumping ahead of slides, um, maybe install some extra ventilation into your bathroom and into your kitchen. On your next rewire, or even before if you want to, put in some extractor fans. Yes, I know some tenants may not use them, <coughs> at least then they've got the choice to. And if it is black spot mould, you can say, use that. It's your fault you're not using that. And you don't have a really good defence of why you've done anything you can to prevent the issues. So again, if we find this, on the whole, we won't be taking any action against the landlords. But in some cases, there could be a defect which is, which is contributing towards this. Um, so it might be that actually you have no cavity wall insulation, so actually all the walls are really cold. And actually, if you install cavity wall insulation, would that help to prevent this? Or maybe you've done an internal room conversion and your bathroom now has no external walls and windows, ventilation, there's no extractor fan in there. So actually, the tenant's having a shower, but where's the moisture going to go? It can't go anywhere. So actually, there could be some case where we do say, yes, this land is tenant's lifestyle in some cases, but actually you can also be doing X, Y and Z to help manage the situation for your tenant. And in some cases, like the bathroom scenario, you could actually say the notice and saying, please put in an extractor van that vents to the external of the property, maybe going through the loft or through another room. Because um, actually all of these factors contribute towards the issue. Obviously here you've got single glazing. So it makes it probably colder. Yes, I said about the ventilation, but actually it's getting that balance right. And if I was doing glazing with trigger vents, actually maybe it wouldn't be as bad. One really bad side effect of 
kind of stitch the black spot mold is actually just mold, green mold. We often get tenants saying, all oh, my clothes have, have this green mold on it. Um, here it's actually a push chair, covered in this green mold. That's from condensation. So it adds, it, it'll go to a hard surface and become black mold, but it'll actually eat away at somebody's shoes and clothes. So that's a really good sign there actually is a condensation or is it something else? But it was getting to that point, it's really bad. Um, at that point, obviously, it needs to be a real change in how tenants are living, but also, can you do anything else? So, as I said, tenants shouldn't dry clothes on the radiators. One thing, if you wish to, we couldn't make you do this by any means, but where we can, and also say to a landlord, can you afford to buy the tenant a clothes area, a clothes horse? You know, just an extendable thing. £15. Some tenants can't afford that. They generally can't afford to buy food, never mind buy a clothes horse. But actually, if it stops the property going like that, and it keeps your property in good repair, so when you move out, you haven't got to clean that off, actually, is it a good investment? Because then, because then you know, it's, it's a choice. But like I say, it's very much a choice. I'm here to give you advice on how you can maybe improve situations. But actually, by doing that, you can maybe prevent them from drying clothes on the radiator. If someone's got three kids and they go to school the next day and they need uniforms, they're going to wash them either way. So get a clothes area, advise for them to dry it and put them up into a south facing room where there's going to be natural heat from the sun to make them dry a bit quicker, but not so fast as a radiator would. And actually, it could help to prevent getting that bad or getting as bad as that. I say it's a recommendation, you don't have to do that. But there's some quick wins and actually as a landlord you may choose to do if a tenant can't afford to do it themselves you'll know your tenant situation you'll know why the rental is how which money they have or they haven't got you'll see from the children's bedroom and inspections and there's no duvet there's no books there's no toys um can they afford it can they not so again to just just, to just think around down the outside of actually what other things can you be doing on the whole, I say, unless it's a defect that's causing condensation, we won't get involved. Um, it's very much tenant, please <coughs> occupy the property differently, but you can assist that. As Bruce already mentioned, we do have the data loggers and we do use them. We are actually buying more because there actually has been a massive increase in the number of complaints in the last, um, in the last month or so. We also do get an increase in the winter. It's the north of England, it's called, and we'll get condensation complaints. Also, the news is very much exacerbated the number we are receiving. Um, but yeah, I say it's dual, it can be very much dual cases. And that's all I had. I'll pass over to Emma and any questions.